Okay, so hi everyone. So this video, I will explain about the basic for structural design, which is just the introduction for this chapter. Okay, so structure design. Structure design is a process of determinations of reliable structural system, selections of suitable materials, and obtaining the optimum member size for the structure to be built. So the aim of structural design is to ensure that the structure performs satisfactory during its design life. So the basic requirements for structural designs there is four. Okay. So number one is the function and aesthetic, which is the arrangement for the space, for the span, ceiling height, accessibility, and traffic flow must complement the intended use. Okay, and then number two is safety and reliability. So a structure must be strong enough to support all anticipated loading safely and it must not deflect, overturn, tilt, vibrate or cracks in any manner that impairs or its usefulness. So for sure, everyone wants to stay in a safe building. Okay, there's no one want to have a very dangerous or hazardous structure. Okay, so number three is economic and cost effective for sure we do want to pay more than it should be so the overall cost of the structure should be not exceed the client budget and the designer should take into account not only the cost of material but also the buildability so the design from the architecture must be also buildability it's not like something not logic at all to be construct okay and then also the construction time should be logic also okay and then cost of cost of temporary structures required and cost of maintenance so all these must be considered and then number four is maintainability and sustainability so a structure should be designed to require minimum maintenance and be able to be maintained with ease so code of practice so for this uh, structure design subjects so we will use euro code standard Okay, so it's developed, Eurocode standard is developed, started from 1975 and effectively replaced the current British standard. So previously, before the Eurocode, we are using the British standard and claim to be most technically advanced structure, structural codes in the world and resulted in more economic structure, logical and organized to avoid repetitions and also less restrictive and more intensive than the existing codes. And there are 10 zero codes covering all the main structure materials. So here, this is the chart for the zero codes with explanations where BSEM1990 zero code, okay, which is the basic of structural design, including inside you have structural safety, serviceability, and durability. Zero code one is for the actions on structures. Okay, zero code two is for concrete. Three is for steel. Four is for composite. 5 is for timber, 6 is for masonry wall, which is the brick, okay, brick wall or masonry wall, and also 7 is for geotechnical designs, and 8 is for seismic design, okay, which is for the earthquake zone building, and 9 is for the aluminium, okay, so for this you have the design and details, okay, and then for this you have the geotechnical seismic design details. So, code of practice for the Malaysia standard, okay, which is implemented by from the Eurocode basic of structural design, okay, so this one. So, for the just now for the Eurocode, you can get it from the e-resources from the library where you can check my another video in the YouTube on how to download from the uh, the British standard, uh, the Eurocode, the British standard in from the e-resources of library. However, in the uh, e-resources of the library utilization, we don't have the Malaysia standard. So this one will be provided by you for the Malaysia standard that need to be used like MS544 that I will provide for you later. So for this, let, us, let I explain the section. So you can see that we have section 1 to 6 and then this is the content for it. Okay, so you can download the Eurocode. Uh, from it and then you can see what is the content also. So for basic of structural design, so we have general requirements, principle of limit state design, basic variable, structural analysis and design assisted by testing, verification of partial factor methods, 
application for buildings, bridges, management of structural reliability for construction work, basic or partial factor design and reliability analysis, and also the design assisted by testing. Okay, so included the section and the annex. And then the Euro code one, which is the action on structure, it will explain about the density, self weight, imposed load. So basically, on loading, you can see that number two is uh, action on the structure exposed to fire. So number three is snow loads. Uh, four is wind load. Five is thermal loads. And six is action during the executions and accidental, accidental action for seven. Okay, and then this number two here is for the traffic load on bridges. And action induced by cranes and machinery in the number three, and then the silos and tanks. So you record two here, okay? You have the general rules and rules for buildings, which is number two. Just now I explained the you record two, okay? For the you record two, it's about the design for concrete. So you have the general rules for buildings and structure fire design, design and detailing use. The number three here is quick retaining and con structures so videos uh on coming videos okay onwards we will provide i will provide also the example design calculations and okay so the euro code tree is for the seal structure so you can read also for these general rules and also the strength abilities for shear structure planar plated structure and so on so you can go through it and after you download you the euro code from the e-resources utilization Okay, so also we have the annex, okay, UK National Annex to Eurocode 5, okay, design for timber, okay, and then also we, we use MS544 part 1 and 2, okay, from this. So this one will provide that to you. So the Eurocode terminology, okay, so you need to understand what is the terminology in the Eurocode, okay, so we will run away. So principles. So principle is the cloud that general statement. Provide the general statement, definition, requirements, and analytical models. Okay, they are divided identified by P. Okay, after the class number. So the class number after that with a P is the principle. And then the characteristic value, which is the K. This is K stands for characteristic value. Design value is stand for D. Okay, so let's say example the FCD means the design value for the compressive strength. Okay, FCK over the gamma C. Okay, QD. Okay, so this is the design value for QD. Okay, so actions is stand for F. Uh, F is stand for action. Sorry. So F, when you see F, mean is for action, means set of forces. Okay, deformations or acceleration, accelerations acting on the structure. Permanent actions, which is G, okay, and then which is also called as life load, and variable actions Q, which is the life load, such as the wind load and imposed load. So the limit limit state design. What is limit state design? Actually, we have limit state design and severe severability limit state design. Okay, where right? we have. Ultimate limit state and also servability limit state ULS and SLS. So the design of EC is based on limit state principle, which is the structure should not be unfit for the use as well as should not be reach a limit state during its intended life. So ultimate limit state is deal with the strength and stability of the structure under the maximum design load and it is expected to carry. And servile serviceability Limit state SLS is deal with the condition beyond service requirements that are no longer made, such as the excessive deflections and cracking. So for the loadings, uh, the lead, the limit state design. Okay, we have these two. So we need to we have used this for the loading when we calculate. So design working life. Okay, so also when you design, you need to you design according to the working life needed. So here we have five categories. Okay, so from number one is 10, which is for the temporary structures, 10 years, and 10 to 25 years for replaceable structures such as the gantry, girders, bearings. And 15 to 30 years is for agriculture and similar structures. 50 years is for building structure and commons 
built structure so normally we'll use this and for the monumental building structures bridges and other civil engineering structure we will use the hundred years also okay and then for the design situations there are four there are four design situations which we need to consider okay number one is the persistent which is referred to the condition of normal use and it's generally related to the design working life number two is the transients transients which is the temporary conditions such as during executions or repair accidentals means this is referred to the exceptional conditions such as during fire and as all explosion or impacts and number four is seismic this situation refer to exceptional condition applicable to the structure when subjected to seismic event which is the earthquake okay and exposure condi exposure conditions okay there are four classes okay so you can see that we have four uh, exposure classes related to environmental condition we have x c1 xc2 xc3 xc4 for the corrosions induced by the carbonations and also number three is corrosions induced by the chlorides okay so you can read through this dry or permanently wet wet and really dry moderate humidity okay and then so you can read this what is this situation stand for what is this means for so concrete inside the buildings with low air humidity is normally C xc1 okay and then concrete surface subjected to long-term water contact so let's say uh, many foundations or what that will use this wet and really dry and concrete inside the building with moderate or high humidity you will use cx3 okay concrete surface subjected to water contact and not within exposure class cx2 not within this exposure then you will use cx5 cx4 xc4 sorry xc so corrosion induced by chlorides okay so concrete surface exposed to air bones chlorides and so on so this you can read okay according you will design according to the exposure class needed so the actions okay the actions ec terminology for loads which is the f just now okay are uh, imposed deformations okay the characteristic for uh, actions are the actual loads on the structure is designed to carry and then the characteristic action used to the in, in the design that characteristic just now which is stand for k you can see that you have gk for the permanent actions variable action for the qk and the wind actions with wk so when you see this k means the characteristic action okay and so for the gk which is the permanent load okay permanent load is the self weight of the structure weight of the finishes ceiling and services means that this load is permanently stand on its structure and in the buildings it will not change or will not increase or reduce because it is from the self weight so we can see that we will calculate it based on the density and then calculate with the volume so we will get the weight so the lightweight concrete normal weight concrete cement mortar wood plywood particle board particle board steel and water and with the density provided so when you calculate you will base on this and then okay the action caused by the variable condition actions means it's like life load is changeable okay caused by people furnitures equipments which variation in magnitude with its time is considered so example of the variable action is given in the ec1 which is the uh, euro code number one are uh, shown in the table below so you have category A1, A2, A3, A5, A7, B1, C5, D1, E12, E17, and E, and category F. So you will go through it, okay, when you do the design, and what is the QK, okay, needed. So for design actions, okay, in order to account for variables in the loads due to the arrows, okay constructions in accuracy possible the load then we will have the ft equal to fk times gamma f which is the gamma s is the safety factor so you can refer to one nine uh, euro code zero okay annex a1 euro code 
Okay, so guys, for actions, which is the combination of actions, we okay, saw so in the EC, which is the euro code, the terms combinations of action is specifically used for the definitions of the magnitudes of actions to be used when a limit state is under the influence of different actions. So it should not be confused with block cases, which are concerned with the arrangement of the variable actions to give the most unfavorable conditions. Okay, so the following for process can be used to determine the values of actions used for analysis. So we need to identify the design situation. For example, it is the persistent system, okay, transients or accidentals, okay, for the load. And identify all realistic characteristic actions. So determine the partial factors for each applicable combination of actions. So for the loadings, we need to have the GK and also QK. So this we will need to check later from the examples for the calculations. Then I will explain on how to determine this. Okay. So for the load, we must add the QK and GK both. Okay, so and then the minimum action is 1.35 GK. Arrangement of the combined actions to produce the most critical conditions. So for a building, so we must calculate and design the load based on the most critical condition. Okay. So thank you. So this is the end of the chapter one. So I will see you in chapter two for next video.